everyone. Welcome to Portland City Hall. This is the June 6th afternoon session of the Portland City Council. Carla, please call the roll. Fish? Here. Hardesty? Udaley? Fritz? Here. Wheeler? Here. I don't think we need to read the rules this afternoon. We only have one item on our agenda. Carla, could you please read it? Yes. Item 549, except the 2019 Annual Report on Sister City Activities. Colleagues, today we have the opportunity of hearing from Portland's Sister City Associations as part of their annual required but always highly anticipated report to the Portland City Council. I hope that through this presentation, the Council and the public have an opportunity to learn more about the important work of our Sister City Association. Now I'd like to hand it over to Cheeto Dilawayo, International Relations Associate of the Office of Government Relations, to introduce Portland's Sister City Associations. Good afternoon and welcome. Good afternoon, Mayor. Thank you. And, and by the way, while you're getting situated, uh, Commissioner Hardesty were, and I were in a meeting, and I apologize that it ran over, and she'll be here momentarily. That is perfectly fine. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. Um, as the Mayor mentioned, my name is Cheeto Dilawayo. I serve as the International Relations Director for the City of Portland. As part of my work, I support the Portland Sister Cities. I commit a group of volunteers who work together to put on an incredible variety of intercultural events that help us to better engage with our international community. Before inviting my colleagues to speak, I would like to provide some background on the Sister City program. Portland Sister Cities are a member of Sister Cities International, a nonprofit organization that was initiated by Eisenhower in 1956 to foster mutual friendship and understanding internationally. True to the spirit of Sister Cities International, Portland's nine sister cities and one friendship city association help us to facilitate many cultural, educational, and economic exchanges. These ties can be felt through cultural landmarks such as the Lansu Garden and the Portland Japanese Garden but have also come to include activities such as the language immersion programs, sustainability conferences, and annual cultural performances, and much, much more. The Sister City Initiative has greatly enriched our local community. Today, the leadership of Portland Sister City Associations are pleased to present their annual required reports, as Aaron mentioned, on their efforts and activities undertaken in the 2018 calendar year. Thank you for taking the time to listen and accept this report. First up, I'd like to introduce Brian Hoffert, president of the Portland Ashkelon Sister City Association to present. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I'm just been placed into the position as president of the Ashkelon Sister City Association about two months ago. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Um, super excited, looking forward to some really good things for the year ahead. Um, in the 2018, um, we continue to build the board of directors and work towards several fundraising ideas, um, as well as following up with the Multnomah University Matchmaking Research Project in identifying companies um, in Portland and Ashkelon that specialize in new breakthrough electronic environmental and medical technologies, and then creating partnerships between these businesses that would also benefit our association. Over the past 30 years, it's been quite some time since we've had a delegation traveling to Israel and Ashkelon, um, and we're looking forward to meeting uh, the new mayor, um, Tomar Glam, uh, hopefully in February of 2020. Um, so we're looking at trying to do a trip over there in uh, February of 2020. Um, and in that trip, we'll visit the surrounding areas of Israel, um, American businesses such as Intel and Microsoft, and explore partnerships that could uh, work between local businesses here, such as OHSU, PSU, and other institutional, uh, educational institutions. Um, this tour is primarily um, of local business leaders um, to help strengthen our board of directors and secure the needed funding for our new matchmaking initiative. Uh, we also will continue to serve uh, Mayor uh, Ted Wheeler and other Sister City Association presidents in co-chairing our monthly Portland Sister Cities Coalition meeting in the Rose Room at City Hall um, and managing the annual Rose Festival Sister City Association reception at City Hall and other annual Rose and other uh, local um, benefactors. 
Um, serving, our serving our neighbors will continue to work on a leadership development and connection with the city of Portland and Ashkelon, as well as maintaining our new website, uh, Portland Sister City Coalition, and our Facebook page. Um, activities that we've presented in 2019 are we've reached out to the Ashkelon Sister Cities of Baltimore and Sacramento. And we're looking forward to doing uh, some joint ventures with them to reach out to the city and support both them and the city of Ashkelon in efforts that they're making um, through the community, um, doing community outreach, and then also establishing, establishing some business ties. Um, we're also looking at doing several fundraising things throughout the um, 2019 to strengthen our association and then also bring in more people to serve on our board. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate thank appreciate it. it. Yep. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Commissioners, for having us here. I'm Philip Potestio. I am the president of the Portland Bologna Sister City Association. Uh, Bologna is a city in uh, north central Italy of about 500,000 people. About 100,000 of those are students at the university. Uh, this is our 15th anniversary this year. Um, our youth exchange with 10 students leaves for a 15 day homestay next week, at the end of next week. Uh, we sp spend mo much of our time during the year uh, raising money for this program. Our Sagra in November was a tremendous success by our standards and a silent auction we ran this spring uh, just a couple weeks ago at Club Paisano Dance netted us uh, almost $2,000, which was a very nice uh, boon. Um, our incredible board comprised of all volunteers besides being a joy to work with also takes an, on incredible responsibility and increasing responsibility. I see you uh, wasted no time uh, getting, <laughs> getting to a position of authority in Bologna. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I, Nick, I it looks like he's got the right form you've of government in, You've too. infiltrated the local government. Uh, very well done. Thank well you. done. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but but uh, this board has been really wow. a tremendous group yeah. to work with and uh, you of flux uh, in the board membership and our executive director, we've come through uh, with flying colors. Last October, three board members and our youth exchange coordinator emeritus visited Bologna and not only were toured and feted, but also formulated plans and initiatives. After meeting with General Consul Lorenzo Ortona in early spring, he, by the way, uh, takes a great interest in, in our group. He's uh, stationed in San Francisco. A plan for celebrating Portland Bologna's 15th year uh, anniversary has evolved. Uh, Consul Ortona has enlisted the help of the Italian Cultural Institute and its director, Ana Maria Di, Gior Di Giorgio, who has helped arrange an art exhibit to come to Portland. This exhibit, 60 illustrations of the uh, famous uh, children's books of Gianni Rodari, who is celebrating his 100th anniversary this year. Uh, he's a renowned author, and he has incredible illustrations in his books. Uh, they, and also in Bologna, we also have the, uh, an incredible uh, children's book fair. So we are taking an exhibit from that book fair that uh, appeared originally there. It's just, just <laughs> ended. And we'll ha have it at the Portland Art Museum in September. Uh, and thanks to Commissioner Udeli's office, uh, some of the arrangements that were made to get to the, to the uh, uh, Portland Art Museum. Uh, we will have for the first time because of that and because of our 15th anniversary, a visit from the mayor of Bologna, Mayor Marola. Uh, and uh, he's the, also the director of international affairs will be here in September. So they'll join Con Consul Ortona and uh, Director Di Giorgio and other dignitaries to celebrate the exhibit and our 15 years of partnership in September. Uh, we're also very excited that Corey Hokendorf, who's the future prime minister, the next prime minister of the Royal Rosarians, will be leading uh, her prime minister's excursion to Bologna in October of 2020. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work with businesses. I just uh, uh, met with a woman who sells bottle caps of all things. She, uh, in Bologna, there's a company called Pelinco 
well, let me get this right, Pelincori, uh, which is a, uh, a bottle cap manufacturer, and she was, has just spent, she's here still, spent days going around to different craft breweries in uh, um, Oregon and, and uh, you know, and selling her wares, I guess. Huh? Um, one thing that I, you might see on the slides is a picture of, uh, of our grape stompers. Our youth exchange uh, loves to join the Festa Italiana oh. in the grape stopping <laughs> competition. Um, what are you cheerleading? Yeah, I'm cheerleading. I'm, I'm, I'm in the back there screaming my head off. Uh, I should, uh, this is a, a bit of sad news. Uh, after 27 years of Festa Italiana being at Pioneer Square in August, it's not going to be there this year. It's not going to be happening. Um, it's a very sad end of a partnership that uh, started in 1992. Uh, we are looking for ways to have fest activities, and Portland Bologna is a big part of that. Um, but um, it's going to look different. And unfortunately, uh, it came down to finances where um, uh, we couldn't afford the square. So um, I guess there isn't a 27-year get one free policy. <laughs> I was kind of hoping for that, but, but uh, so anyway, we're looking for different ways to, to put on that festival and, and uh, Portland Bologna is always uh, an enthusiastic supporter of that. Thanks for having us again Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you. Dear Mayor and Commissioners, uh, my name is Rick Lamberson. I'm the treasurer of the Portland Guadalajara Sister City Association and I'll be representing uh, our president, Yvette Flores-Schmidt, who can't be here today. Thank you. Uh, 2018 was a great year. We accomplished many things, including celebrating our 35th anniversary as a sister city. Established in 1983, we commemorated this milestone with a rosebush planting ceremony with the Royal Rosarians at Washington Park. The sister city was established as a direct result of, the Royal uh, of a Royal Rosarian visitation, and they continue to be a valued partner in all of our events. Our 2018 Cinco de Mayo Fiesta went very well. We estimated that we had more than 100,000 attendees this year, or last year, and we are very proud to produce an annual festival that the citizens of Portland support and that brings substantial added income to the city and the businesses downtown. Also, at the Fiesta, with the thanks of the United States Customs and Immigration Service, 49 people were sworn in from 37 different countries as new citizens at our annual naturalization ceremony. And it's an, uh, if you've never been there, we'd love to have you, and it's an amazing event to see that happen. The proceeds uh, of our Cinco de Mayo Fiesta and other events that we host and organize during the year help us support many organizations that I can't name all of today, but um, one of the important ones is the Barbero Fire Firefighter Academy in Guadalajara, where the coordination with the coordination of members from the Portland Fire Department. Volunteer firefighters from all Latin American countries are trained with life-saving techniques. We know for a fact that this saves lives every year, and we are also providing funding for a school of children and young adults uh, with autism for low-income families. We've traveled with the Royal Rosarians to Guadalajara last year, where we participated in their biggest parade. It was quite fun, the Fiesta de Octubre, with Rosarian support, a rose bush was planted in Guadalajara to, commemor to commemorate our friendship. Um, also, there was a memorandum of understanding that was signed between the University of Guadalajara and Portland State University, um, hopefully to garner educational exchanges uh, between the two cities. Mayor Wheeler and commissioners, we would like to extend you all an invitation to travel to Guadalajara with us. We'd love to have you and to support our organization to continue this friendship for many years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate the report. Thank you. When's the trip? In October. <laughs> October what? Of this year. I'll, I'll let you know. Please. We'll make sure you're invited. Might be open. We'd love to have you along. Thank That'd you. That'd be great. Thank you so much. Mayor Wheeler, council members. I'm Mike Bostwick, president of the Portland Kaohsiung Sister City Association. And we started out the year with a registration of our Dragon Boat teams. And in February, we had a wonderful trip to Kaohsiung for their Dragon Boat, or excuse me, 
Lantern Festival. We have the Dragon Boat one. Okay, at that time we visited Shuda High School, which is amazing when you walk in, there's 6,000 students cheering and greeting you and everything. And at that time we provided with the help of the Portland Rose Festival Foundation and the Royal Rosarians, $2,500 in scholarships for the students at Shuda High School to come here for the Rose Festival. <coughs> Excuse me. And we met with members of the Kaohsiung City Council and city government and the entire new group of officials. They had elections last year and we had all new, a new mayor, a new uh, council chairman and all their head members of their divisions and different bureaus and stuff were all new. So it was a very interesting conversation with all of them. We were very well received and they, uh, and I look forward to having a long productive relationship with all the new people over there in Kaohsiung. Uh, when we got back, we started off our dragon boat season with the eye dotting ceremony, at which time most of the city of Portland knows that, you know, when they see the boats out on the river, it's, you know, Rose Festival time. So it's, it's very enjoyable to know that. Uh, yesterday we greeted Shuda High School and a delegation from Kaohsiung in Portland along with the Royal Rosarians. Uh, the races will be starting on Saturday and Sunday. We have 57 teams this year, a couple up from last year, and three new teams. We have some special events. We have a high school team where several of the high schools can get together to do a challenge for other high schools. And also we are going to continue having a college university challenge where teams have made up from uh, Oregon State, Oregon, University of Washington will have a couple days of practice and then they challenge each other on a special race. And we hope to continue that and build on that. It's hard to get some of them together sometimes. <laughs> so also on this sun Sunday, we will present to a local uh, Chinese student or Chinese descent a $1,500 scholarship for their college education. And we also are trying to get more involved with other Chinese organizations in the Portland area this year. And in relation to that, we are also started our planning our trip to Kaohsiung next spring for their Lantern Festival, which will be on February 8th, 2020. And you are all invited to join us for that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, my name is Alan Ellis. I'm uh, president of the Portland Cabarro Sister City Association. The photos you'll be seeing were taken last week. Our delegation was there the entire week. And uh, Port uh, Khabarovsk is located in the Russian Far East, right above Manchuria. Uh, it's located in the confluence of two rivers, one of which uh, I think is one of the photos shows one of those rivers, the Amur, which is as large as the Columbia and the smaller one, Usuri, which is like the Willamette. And Khabarovsk is a, a cultural and educational center in that area of Russia. Uh, we sat down with the mayor and deputy mayors and had a very cordial exchange of uh, topics, including various joint projects that we're working on. The last time I was here to address you was in January when we had the rhythmic gymnasts here. and. Uh, led by uh, Jean McCormick, who's on our board and in the audience. And um, she is, and she's going back with her own group uh, next summer. And uh, she's also uh, an expert in telehealth. And we went to a pediatrics hospital that gives free service to any pregnant lady 
uh, throughout the Kabatis region. That region is huge. It's, it's larger than Oregon. And uh, we hope to bring uh, the director uh, to uh, Portland and, and to have him participate in a conference. One of our other members of the delegation works here in, uh, at City Hall, Irene Konev, who was instrumental in bringing about the Slavic and Eastern European Heritage Week proclamation. And we uh, presented a, a framed photocopy of that proclamation to the mayor. And, and uh, Irene, who's fluent in Russian, explained uh, the whole, uh, the, what the proclamation was about and all the Russian speakers we have in this area. And it got, we had a press conference afterwards and the media really picked up on it. So we got good coverage on, on that. Uh, you'll see a photo of the, uh, where the Olympia uh, uh, rhythmic gymnasts uh, work out. They're also building a new baseball stadium and they want to do a baseball exchange and we're uh, in the process of getting a grant through the State Department to, to pull that off, uh, hopefully next summer. Uh, there's a conference uh, that's going to be held at, in Khabarovsk, the Russian-American Pacific Partnership, RAP, coming up at the end of this um, month and it's about doing business with Russia, and especially in the Russian Far East. And the conference has been held in Portland before. This year it's in Khabarovsk. And I just talked with uh, the um, Oregon Business Alliance people, both of whom have studied Russian, one of whom recognized me as a, a teacher back in the 70s. And we'll be working with them to identify businesses who might be interested in uh, doing business in the Russian Far East. Russia is, uh, the, our sister city is open for business, despite uh, any problems that, that uh, we have on the national level. We also, one of the uh, photos is meeting with students at gymnasium number five. They have an ongoing uh, exchange program with, with Russian language students at, Link, at uh, Franklin High School. And uh, there is going to be, you see a, a drawing by a, a, a child from, a fifth grader from Kelly School, which is where the Russian immersion program starts and ends up at Franklin High School. And uh, the, Khabarovsk is wanting to send uh, a number of uh, children's artwork to display here at, in City Hall. And I'll be working with Cheeto on getting that done. And lastly, you see a rock band. Uh, we've been able to get grants from the State Department through the consulate in Vladivostok and the embassy in Moscow to bring three bands in the last four years to Khabarovsk for their festival, which is the week before our festival here. And uh, we have sent a blues band, a bluegrass band, and this year a sizzling rock and roll band, and it, they were received very well, called Otis Heat. They will be performing uh, along with a band that Khabarovsk is sending to us. They'll be performing next fall, the first Sunday in November at the Old Church, and we'll let you know about that. So all in all, a really great visit, and uh, we do a number of things here in Portland as well, including working closely with the restaurant Kochka uh, during uh, holiday celebrations. So, thank you. Thank Al, you. can I just, Mayor, a couple quick, quick questions. Al, um, how long have you been the head of the Habarask uh, Sister City Association? Well, I've been with the Sister City Association almost, almost since its, uh, its start, which was in 1988. And I've been president uh, for the last, uh, uh, 10 or 12 years. Yeah, I think I'm just reflecting on, I think you and Philip are the two senior members of the delegation. <laughs> and um, I, it, it, thank you for, for taking on this assignment. Well, I appreciate that, Commissioner. Um, I, I know it, Phil and I are, I'm, I'm trying not to be czar for eternity. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently there are no term limits, so yeah. you know we're gonna keep you for as long as we can. Um, without without um, checking with my bureau, let me just say that Walker Stadium in Lentz would be honored to host an exhibition game between uh, a visiting baseball team and maybe the Pickles or whatever we could arrange. So if, if we could get some additional information on that as soon as possible, we could, we could sketch out potentially a uh, exhibition game and I think Walker would be a fantastic location. Baseball's become very popular over there. And, and finally, would you, I, I ask you this almost every year because I, I, I love the answer, but um, would you remind us why is this this city sort of in the far end of the country 
sort of located in the middle of nowhere. Why is it the jazz capital of, of Russia? You know, it, 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 it was a Pacific Rim thing in trying to find a city in that area. And uh, Mayor Bud Clark, Commissioner Mike Lindbergh, and uh, Portland State Professor Earl Molander, and uh, Sandra Rosengrant, Sandra Friel's professor at Portland State, uh, went there and went to various cities and uh, visited this one and just, they were charmed and they thought it, it they were, had a lot of things in common. Okay. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Mayor and Commissioners. Good afternoon. <laughs> My name is Karin Hansen and I am the president of the Portland Mutari Sister City Association. And I'm challenging myself today to not read off of a page uh -oh. <laughs> and stick to two minutes. And so, quickly, um, our sister city was established on December 18th, 1991, and we've gone through a lot of ups and downs and changes of what our missions are and all that, but ultimately, we are um, a sister city that's commitment is to humanitarian assistance to this city of our friends in Mutari. And um, we have built a health clinic and we have supported a school, an orphanage school, and amongst some other things. And all of a sudden we kind of have found ourselves kind of lost with our vision and where we're going. So we've been reevaluating, seeing how we might redirect some of our energies. And our most recent meeting to do that reevaluation, we came across a realization that part of our problem, which is no problem at all, is that the two primary organizations we've been supporting have become self-sustaining. That's the best thing you could want for an organization. The Anglican Church has taken over the orphanage school, and the government has taken over the health clinic. There are still there is still lots of need within the country and within the city, and so we're trying to figure out where we fit and how we can support people. We are still buying the panels from FASO, which is Family Aid Support Organization, and buying them directly from the women that create them in their micro business, and then um, taking them, selling them, and then getting money um, back that we then send back and may also send to other organizations that express need. So we're just trying to figure it out. But one wonderful thing that I want to mention in closing that has helped reinvigorate a lot of my passion for the people in Zimbabwe that none of us have ever seen, haven't seen face to face in many years um, because we haven't been able to go there and they haven't been able to come here, um, is the wonders of social media. We now have WhatsApp and it has like opened up the friendships all over again. And so now we can feel the love with each other, send pictures back and forth. So all of the pictures that I sent you are pictures off of WhatsApp and our friend Veronica over there sending us, showing us the wonderful things that are happening over there. Thank you. Thank That's you, great. God. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Honorable Mayor Wheeler and Commissioners, my name is Michael Bacon. And as the president of the Portland Sapporo Sister City Association, I'm honored and humbled to provide you our annual uh, brief report. Um, unlike Karen, I am going to stick to my paper in order to keep to two or three minutes. And because this is, uh, as you presumably know, our 60th anniversary, and there are just a few speaking engagements that I'm being prepared for and have lots of remarks to make. So uh, we are excited to be celebrating our 60th anniversary. Um, the sister city relationship between Sapporo, Japan, and Portland is one of the longest standing sister city relationships in the US beginning in 1959 and continues with regular, plentiful, and meaningful exchanges that have built an incredibly strong uh, bond of friendship between our two cities. In our recommitment uh, to this enduring friendship, the PSSCA drafted a new strategic plan with a new mission statement that reads, to foster and promote friendship and mutual understanding through exchanges and interactions between the people of Portland and Sapporo to build a foundation for a more peaceful and sustainable world, which I think connects very well to what uh, Mayor Wheeler shared in just before this. We also held a competition to design a new logo, which you can see if you go back one slide, in the uh, two slides, maybe, uh, yes. There at the top. In the center of this first slide at the top, the symbol of star, Polaris, is found in many of Sapporo's cultural sites, such as the Sapporo Clock Tower, former Hokkaido government office, and the old Sapporo Beer Factory, representing the development of Hokkaido. The bridge is inspired by Portland's new pedestrian bridge, the Tilkum Crossing. Uh, the water below represents the Willamette River in Portland and the Toyohira River in Sapporo, 
Combined together, this logo celebrates 60 years of sister city uh, relationship and expresses uh, our association's mission, bridging people between Portland and Sapporo to create a peaceful and sustainable world. Yesterday, we welcomed Sapporo Mayor Akimoto and a 90-member 60th anniversary memorial delegation from Sapporo. The mayor and delegation will be here until this Sunday, joining the people of Portland in celebrating the Rose Festival and our 60th anniversary. As you will see in the slides, there are many events planned in this short five-day period. However, I would like to just highlight a particularly special event happening this afternoon, which you all are, of course, invited, and Mayor Wheeler will be speaking there. The rededication of the Sapporo Peace Bell at the Oregon Convention Center. 30 years ago, the people of Portland were given a gift. The city of Port Sapporo commissioned a beautiful bell to be presented to the city of Portland in celebration of the 30th anniversary. Then Mayor Bud Clark accepted this gift on behalf of the city of Portland, and shortly thereafter, the bell landed in its new home in the northeast corner of the Oregon Convention Center. In the spirit of a President Eisenhower's city sister city initiative following World War II, this gift came to symbolize friendship and peace with common citizens ringing in times of concern. Subsequently, the bell became known as the Sapporo Peace Bell. Today, we have been given another gift. The movement of this bell from its original home up north of here, of, the, of that place, uh, to the new southeast location provides an amazing opportunity to bring us together to reflect upon and acknowledge the past, to celebrate the present 60th anniversary, and to envision the future of and our recommitment to this friendship that is inclusive of all people in our vibrant and innovative cities. As we move into the future, the vision of Portland Sapporo Sister City Association is to connect all peoples, all peoples, past, present, and future from Sapporo and Portland. As part of this endeavor, this afternoon, we will welcome members of our local tribes of the Portland area, as well as our special Ainu, the indigenous people, uh, first peoples of Northern Japan, a people that were not recognized until just this January as the indigenous people of Northern Japan. Furthermore, in collaboration with the Portland Japanese Garden and Portland State University's Native American Student and Community Center, the Oregon Convention Center, and Metro work to include first plants in the surrounding garden, first plants from both sides of the Pacific, and welcome posts carved by indigenous artisans from both sides of the Pacific, uh, Chinook and Ainu. The welcome posts will be de dedicated in August after their current exhibition finishes at the Portland Japanese Garden. Our Sapporo Peace Bell rededication ceremony this afternoon also includes a land acknowledgement and protocol performed by a canoe family. Please join us at 4.30 today as we re rededicate the bell in a recommitment to this long-standing friendship and a future that is inclusive of all people on both sides of the Pacific Ocean. I also would like to extend the invitation that this October, busy October for you, um, is we will be taking our 60th uh, del uh, anniversary delegation with Mayor Wheeler um, to Sapporo on October 22nd um, through the 27th. So please join us if you can. Finally, I would like to recognize the incredible efforts of my fellow board members and our partners in Sapporo. The relationship thrives because of the talents, hard work, and dedication of many. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks Michael. Good afternoon, Mayor Wheeler and City Commissioners. My name is Bonnie Starkey. I'm the president of the Portland Sujo Sister City Association, so we're the other PSSCA. Uh, 2018 was a busy year. Portland and Sujo celebrated 30 years of sister city relations with more activities following Mayor Wheeler's delegation to Sujo in April. Five events over a weekend in July were attended by four delegations from Sujo and included a poster exhibit at City Hall highlighting Sujo's journey over the past 40 years. The 90-piece Sujo Chinese Orchestra we were honored to hear at PSU's Lincoln Hall. Is amazing. Uh, the rose bed dedication at Washington Park Rose Garden, where Mayor, Mayor Wheeler and Mr. Goujet uh, planted and watered a rose bush in the bed dedicated by Portland Parks and Recreation Department. At Hoyt Arboretum Chinese Forest, an osmanthus tree was planted, a fitting complement to the tree planting ceremony in Suzhou. Um, this tree is the twin of a tree that's been planted in the Lansu Garden, and both were propagated from a big old osmanthus that was in the Lansu Garden until recently. 
so it was a very fun event, uh, good photo ops, and always a good opportunity to see our leaders at work with shovel shovels and, and watering cans. It, it was painful, but it, at the end of the day, <laughs> we all got like the job done. It looked like you were having done. fun, so that was, you know, <laughs> you were smiling. I have an os osmanthus that I got from the Lansu garden. It's planted in my garden. Oh, I want one. <laughs> we'll talk. Uh, the 30th anniversary uh, weekend events culminated with our Evening Under the Stars Gala at the Lansu Chinese Garden. For the first time, we featured prominent artists from both Suzhou and Portland. Previously, we had just had Suzhou artists, and so it seemed very fitting to have Portland artists too. Two high-level delegations followed in September and November to attend an environmental seminar and a round tree uh, roundtable discussion, both organized by Business Oregon. PSSCA wrapped up 2018 with our annual dinner and installation of new officers and our uh, annual strategic planning meeting. Based on goals set, we made changes to our bylaws, created an advisory council, and set the date for our next event for May 23rd, 2019. We were honored to have Mayor Wheeler and the Chinese Consul General, Ambassador Wang from San Francisco attend. Speakers addressed the importance of collaboration between our cities and the benefits this relationship has had to Portland. I mean, we were in the Lansu Garden, so we could have just stopped right there. You know, <laughs> it's an amazing feature. Uh, P, um, we also awarded our annual Nukem Wang Memorial uh, Scholarship of $500 to a Chinese student at PSU. PSSCA has had a leading role in fostering the nine sister city partnerships Portland has with Suzhou schools. In February, there were 78 students and 10 teachers from five Suzhou schools visiting their Portland sister schools and doing home stays. That's 88 new people introduced to Portland in a very personal way. Last Thursday, Hosford's eighth graders presented their China Research Residency Capstone projects based on their two-week experiences in Suzhou. These are our future leaders, citizens, employees, and employers, and they are so confident. The Woodstock third graders Portland Suzhou Bridges mural beautifully embodies the spirit of our sister city relationship. The sister city associations are bridges of friendship between our cities, one event, one delegation, one student at a time. It's what we can do on an individual, personal level to build a future where we're not dealing with foreigners, but with friends, people we know, like, and trust. Thank you all for your strong support of our sister city associations. Thank you, Bonnie. Good afternoon. I don't think I can speak that fast. I'm gonna try. Uh, my name is Miyang Maguire, M-A-G. U-I-R-E. I noticed my spelling kind of got mixed up there. Um, 10 days ago, group of six, we just came back from Ulsan Sister City for our um, Rose uh, par Parade, Rose Festival in Ulsan. And um, we have two Royal Rosarian, Kathy Fasnall and uh, Craig uh, Jokinson. I'd like to share three things with you guys today. And the first thing is our uh, Rose Festival in Ulsan, to see all these faces of people. Finally, they know how to stop and smell the roses, and the children looking at Royal Rosarian with their uniform, the white, the flower, the light, and getting little rose sticker, their light, the face just light up, and I'm like, wow, I, I'm really thankful for Royal Rosarian. Take their time, their, um, put everything forward to really share the rose. Um, so I really appreciate Royal Rosarian for that. Um, that's why we went and we also, uh, we visited a Portland rose bed that we dedicated two years ago and it's blossoming beautifully. They have a beautiful sign. Well, oh, hope that we have that picture. Uh, beautiful sign and how far distance from Portland to Ulsan City is. And also, there's a picture of um, Nickerson, um, Martin Nickerson, thank you. Martin Nickerson uh, uh, dedicating a plaque. Actually, he, t he take all his time and cut the wood and he designed a Poland logo and Ulsan logo and that's gonna be at in Ulsan 
Poland Arboreum. And right now they're really working on it. We were there, took picture, that was awesome. Um, they're gonna open it, they're gonna be completed by end of this year. And hoping that they'll be open and dedicated by next year, um, Rose Parade, which is in June, I mean, May. Um, I was, I'm really looking forward to maybe Mayor Ted Wheeler can able to join, that'd be awesome. Uh, well, maybe somebody else will go oh, next oh, time, right? Thank, that's right, <laughs> that's right, of course, of course, thank you. And uh, whoever visit, and definitely I'll the, the give you one of this, the scarf. <laughs> so uh, the lastly, I wanna just talk to you about the scarf really quick and everybody said how wonderful it is. And we see the Ulsan city logo on one side and the other side we have a Poland logo, logo oh. and connect them oh, by the cool. roses. And that's our sister nice. city. And we have honorable member of uh, our sister city association in Korea, in Ulsan. I designed this and I was gonna print it in Korea because it's cheaper and he just pay for everything and he print 100 of this for us, 100, and donate it to us. Um, at the lastly, actually, what I wanna really share this is that um, my husband also came this visit and he found a box of letter of, from his father, uh, written over 60 some years ago, and he was Korean War veterans. And it, the letter was about he was waiting in Okinawa, the boat he took and where he landed, which is by Ulsan, and Busan and Ulsan port, and went on all the way to Incheon, a meeting point with uh, MacArthur. And that was awesome to see, and then we were sharing it on the gentleman who was sitting with us, and he, he was, uh, Ulsan Broadcasting Company. He thought that was awesome, so we got our interview, and all of us delegation was on the TV and sharing, all, able to share the Korean War veterans story at the time yeah. too. And um, I want this our uh, relationship, made by roses, two cities go on and on. Appreciate that. Thank Thanks. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good afternoon. Okay, last but not least. Here, here. Utrecht. My name is uh, Rinder Schutten. I'm the president of the Portland Utrecht Network. Uh, I believe you all know where Utrecht is. It's a city in the center of the Netherlands. So in the Netherlands, we have this funny um, uh, ha uh, event happening in the beginning of uh, December. It's called Sinterklaas. Like uh, in the US, we all know that Santa Claus comes from the North Pole, but Santa Claus comes from Spain. A way different story. I can tell you more about it, but we have to have some beer or something <laughs> in order to do that. That always happens every year. Always a great success for the children because they get some presents as well. We also had a very successful um, Dutch festival. It used to be called King's Festival. But yeah, in honesty, uh, we all like the king because we have a party, the primary reason. Um, it was very successful this year, it's every year at Oaks Park, and we have, I think, over 600 people. Uh, more and more Americans actually are coming to the party, so that's good. But I really want to talk a little bit more about what we did in terms of celebrating the style. The style was a cultural uh, happening back in the Netherlands, started in the Netherlands about 100 years ago and was celebrated all over the Netherlands there. And we last year had the idea to bring that to Portland, exactly what we did. You all will rec recognize, I guess, the iconic imagery of a Mondrian and probably the chair made by a Dutch architect and, and furniture maker, Rietveld. So what we did, we brought art history, a theater, and public art to Portland. So the first evening that we organized, uh, next slide please, was a nice a night at the Portland Art Museum. Um, if you look at the picture on the left, you also see Miss Udaly over there. She was so nice to actually spend a few, uh, give a few words uh, to introduce uh, uh, the friendship that we have between Portland and Utrecht as well. The guy over there on the right, Matthijs, he gave a absolute great introduction in the art movement called the style. You may think it's a dry subject art history. Well, it is not. He made it very lively and very interesting. 
And yes, we have to thank the Portland Art Museum for donating the, the, the Witzel Room, which holds a lot of people. And indeed, we had it filled very nicely with over 200 people. Very successful, very successful event. Next, we had three uh, performances of a, an amazing woman. She gave a one woman show. She wrote it, she directed it, and she played it. She played it in the Netherlands many times in Dutch. And then, based on a grant from the city of Utrecht to translate it into English, she did it in English. And that's the Dutch style. We doesn't matter what language it is. We'll probably speak it or we'll do something with it. Great artist at Portland State uh, University at Lincoln uh, Studio Hall. Three wonderful evenings. And then the third element is uh, the mural. Because, as you know, there are many, many murals in Portland already. So we thought to leave something of the style in Portland, not just having experiences, but have a physical presence. And that's exactly what we did by creating this mural. We invited a Dutch artist, Menno Anker, to come over, design it, and working with the students of PNCA, who executed it, who painted it. We created this wonderful mural at the corner of Tillamook and 43 in the Hollywood <coughs> district. And it really livens up that part of town. In the meantime, there have been actually other murals happening in the same uh, overall area. So I think Hollywood is, is really becoming uh, a, a better and better place to be. So those are the three events that we did. And I must actually thank uh, Rack for a grant that they gave us in order to make the mural uh, together with the city of Utrecht again. Very helpful in making it happen. So, we are already looking at the after, but you may have seen it before. Yeah, this, this is blue, but it's kind of boring. So, if you go to the next one, you can see actually what we did with that particular corner. It's really very different style mural than you will see typically in Portland and really exemplifies the, the style of the style, the style of the style actually in Portland and it will be there for the foreseeable future. So uh, the team that made this happen should be recognized and that includes myself, <laughs> but also Gary Parkenstecher, uh, Peggy Harkins and Shireen Farahi because putting all these three events up is a hell of a lot of work. So after we all did, I went for six weeks to Australia because I had to get out of it. <laughs> and it worked very well, yeah. So thank the team. So what's next? Well, uh, we have done beer events in the past and we're doing beer events again because both Portland and the Utrechters, they all like beer. So we had a photographer coming over. He's shooting, he shot a lot of pictures in various breweries, both in the Netherlands and in Portland. Those, those will be exhibited at the Brewers Festival in July, so more than welcome to come. And yes, we are working on creating a Portland mural in Utrecht. And yes, Commissioner Fish, we are still thinking of the Timbers and FC Utrecht in order to bring some connection in the area of soccer together between the two cities. Okay. Uh, it's not scheduled yet on the calendar because it's a hard thing to organize, but we'll, we'll, make it, we'll make it happen, if not next year, the year after. And I know, uh, Commissioner Hardesty, you, you wanted to go everywhere, right? I do. Well, yeah. Utrecht is a great city, so we welcome you to come to Utrecht as well. <laughs> No, Carla, I've been to Netherlands, but I'm ready. thank you. Carla, would you make a note? Uh, I've been doing the math. Commissioner Hardesty will be out from, <laughs> from September till January. <laughs> January and year. if we can hold on all the emergency or ordinances, and we'll just skip consent, and we'll just manage to bumble along. I'd be happy to call in for council meetings. Thank you. Oh, good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yep. Thank Thanks, you. Rendrick. Thank you very much. Well, thank you all of you for your presentations. This is always a very <laughs> positive and uplifting experience. And, and again, uh, I, I approach this very much the same way Commissioner Hardesty does. It's almost like a travel log, isn't it? Uh, but at a deeper level, it's, it's about creating important ties that are educational, social, and economic with, with our sister relationships around the globe. And that obviously does not 
happen without people here who are volunteering countless hours to make it happen. So I really appreciate all the great work that you've done. Uh, I'll give my colleagues an opportunity to say whatever they'd like well, to Mayor, say. Mayor, I move the I'll... report. Second. Commissioner Hardesty. So I moved in. We have second. Okay, we have a, we have a motion from Commissioner Fish, a second from Commissioner Fritz. Commissioner Hardesty. Um, I just want to say what an incredible uh, afternoon this has been. First, with the uh, welcome celebration and the recognition of 60 years of sister city, sister city relationships. Um, I am thrilled to be a part of the council and to have been a part of today's activities. I want to thank the staff with the international um, office who did an incredible job of bringing all of us together uh, for this celebration today. And uh, I look forward to the opportunity to, to uh, move the mayor aside for some of these chips so I can go see for myself what a great job we're doing and building these international uh, relationships. Uh, thank you. Please call the roll, Carla. Fish. Uh, this is one of my favorite um, council presentations. Uh, I wanna start by acknowledging we've had the leadership of nine sister city relationships and one friendship uh, city association with us this afternoon. And uh, many of you have been in those leadership roles for a long time. And I can't even imagine the amount of time that you put into this role. This is pure public service. And so let's begin by thanking you for what you do on behalf of our great city um, and building these relationships. Um, uh, Commissioner Hardesty and I had the great pleasure earlier today of being at the at the reception, at the, at the uh, uh, formal presentation and then the reception. Um, I think that event keeps getting better and I particularly appreciated one of the keynote speakers, um, a woman who was a tribal leader and elder who came and gave a beautiful speech that put the whole thing into context. And Mayor, thank you for your remarks. And um, um, I even enjoyed the comments from the Mayor of Sapporo, the pieces I could pick up that weren't translated, of course. Uh, but it was a marvelous event. And when we open our doors to the world, as we do each year, we're all better for it. Um, you know, as the Parks Commissioner, I'm especially proud of our world-class gardens that reflect some of these relationships. And the Lansu Chinese Garden, obviously, the Portland Japanese Garden, and the International Rose Test Garden in particular. Um, as everyone here knows, Lansu was built by artisans from Suzhou. And the name of the garden is very special. Lan represents Portland and Sioux represents Suzhou. So it's a combination of both words, honoring a, a, a deep bond between our two, our two cities. Um, tomorrow, we'll celebrate 20 years of excellence at the, at the classical garden with a special ceremony that I'll have the honor of representing the city at and our friend Mike Lindbergh who also, who apparently who scouted most of these sister city relations, but had his particular role with, um, with, with Sujo will be present. We'll have a chance to thank him. I'm also excited that tomorrow there'll be a celebration at the International Rose Test Garden. A rose garden bed is being dedicated for our Sapporo sister city. And of course, we can never forget the craftspeople from Sapporo that came to our city and helped build the great Japanese garden. Um, we, we here in Portland sometimes take for granted the fact that we have the greatest Japanese garden and Chinese garden, classical Chinese garden outside of the two countries for which they are known and that we're the envy of the world for those gardens. Just another example of, of how we have profited from these sister city relationships and all that they mean for us. So to each of you who, has, who makes these uh, relationships possible, thank you to you and your boards. Um, uh, and thank you for this presentation. And I want to close by thanking Chi Do, the director of our Inter International Relations Program. I don't know where she's sitting. Um, she really does a good job. And she was a terrific host uh, at, uh, over the lunch hour. And um, it takes a lot of work to organize this, obviously. So uh, thank you for your service. And today's a day to celebrate. And we need more of that during these uh, darker days. So. Thank you all. I'm pleased to accept your report. Aye. Hardesty? I think Commissioner Fish said it all. <laughs> and so I will only add my thanks to uh, his very detailed thank yous uh, for the events of today. And 
just say that I look forward to us uh, strengthening our relationships. I thought the mayor uh, made an excellent point earlier at the reception that in these times where people are divisive and just mean-spirited and mean to each other, how wonderful that we're a model of how you can extend your hand um, and create opportunities and friendships that last uh, and we're going into 60 years. I look forward to the next 60 years, strengthening them and making them even better than they are now. I hope that if you take anything from today, is that we're open to having better, longer, uh, more mutually beneficial relationships. And just what happens at the national level does not reflect our, our perspective or our viewpoints at all. I vote aye. Fritz. When I was growing up in England, there was a program called the Children's International Summer Villages, and it was highly competitive. You had to apply to be in it, and then children from all over the world came to stay for a month, and you got to know uh, people from all over the world. And, and I applied, and I didn't get selected, which was crushing. But then I got a consolation prize of big, go, having an exchange to Utrecht in the Netherlands. Um, so I got to go to there for two weeks, and then the person that we stayed with came back to our house. and. That was my first ever trip abroad. Um, so I feel like I'm here in Portland. This is the People's International Summer Village, except it's year round. People might wonder, you know, why are these particular um, cities our sister cities? And the answer is because the communities wanted them to be. These, this is a community led program. You do the fundraising, you do the organizing. We have a wonderful staff, Chico, thank you, in the Office of Government Relations. This is your program, and it's really great that you come. I know we, we require you to come, so there's that. But um, every year, now for 11 years, I've been reminded that, you know, people say we're monocultural here in Portland. We, you know, we're just all the same. Well, we're not. We're from all over, and we have ancestors from all over, and we have ancestors from here. And it's, it's a rich and wonderful program. My son and daughter-in-law were married at Lansu Chinese Garden, and I was just remembering that the Osmanthus tree was purchased for me by my parents, neither of whom are now uh, still on. No, my, actually, my mum is still here, but she doesn't come to Portland anymore. Um, so it's, there's just so many great things happening. Thank you, each, each and every one of you. Um, Mutari, I'm so happy to hear that you're wondering what to do next, because the orphanage and the school are doing so well, and the health clinic. That's absolutely fabulous. So congratulations to one and all. Aye. Wheeler. Well, I, I always find this presentation to be very, very uplifting. And I thank everybody for being here today and sharing with us the stories and the good work that you've been doing. And Cheeto, I want to express my thanks and my gratitude as well. You've been working very, very hard of late. And uh, it, it shows. It's paid off. Uh, and I also want to just acknowledge this. Uh, Mayor... Um, uh, uh, um, uh, Akimoto, Mayor Akimoto from Sapporo is here today with his sizable delegation. It includes members of his legislative body. And I actually think it makes a great statement to have more of us going on some of these trips, particularly when it's an important milestone year for the relationship. And I, I was telling Katrina this morning that in many regards, in American culture, we don't appreciate these kinds of relationships as much as others do in other parts of the world. These are very, very important relationships for our sister cities. And it's important that when we go to our sister cities, we uh, honor them in the same way and in kind to the way that they choose to honor us when they come here. And the delegation from Sapporo has over 90 people in it, and it represents scholars, educators, uh, it, it represents business community people, people from the nonprofit sector, government officials from different agencies. And they take it intensely seriously because they value what is behind the relationships. And so uh, I would actually encourage us to think about broader delegations that include more members of the city council. Uh, plus, frankly, I'll rest easier at night knowing you're also with me and that you're not doing things back here without my knowledge. So I, I think there's many benefits to it. Uh, but, but again, uh, thanks for all the great work you're doing and uh, thanks for honoring our community. I vote aye. The report's adopted. Mayor, uh, Mariana is here Fish. to take a picture with us and, great. and our honored guests. Why don't we go ahead and adjourn and so we'll, we'll take the photos. This, great. Uh, Thank you. Area here.